Today I want to show you how the new WebAssembly interface types proposal could make it a lot easier to run WebAssembly in a whole bunch of different places. I'll explain a little bit about the proposal, and you can read even more about it in the Hacks blog post. But if you want to jump straight into the action, go ahead and skip to the 2 minute and 30 second mark. People are excited about running WebAssembly in lots of places outside of the browser. And you can run WebAssembly in a lot of these places today. But the API is going to be hard to use. That's because currently, the WebAssembly module in your system can only talk using numbers. That's not very useful. But there's a new proposal that will fix this, called WebAssembly Interface Types. With this in place, WebAssembly modules will be able to interoperate with all of these things using rich APIs with complex types like strings, objects, and arrays. So the same single WebAssembly module could be used to talk to Python modules and PHP and Ruby running in their own runtimes, or it could interoperate with other WebAssembly modules written in different languages, or it could talk directly with the host system, things like the browser or operating systems using these complex types. And this won't even require a build step. It will just be the same WebAssembly module running across all of these environments. I've written all about this in an article on the Hacks blog. But here I want to show you this demo in action. So I'll go through demos showing you how we can take the same WebAssembly module and run it in all of these different places. Why would you want to use it as a WebAssembly module in all of these places instead of just rewriting it in various languages? A few reasons. If your app is in a scripting language like Python, then WebAssembly could be much faster. If your app is in a low-level language like C++, then WebAssembly can give you lightweight sandboxing. That means that the module can't access memory or resources unless they've been directly given to it. So this can help make reusing code more secure. And for both scripting languages and low-level languages, being able to reuse code from any language ecosystem without having to rewrite it in your language can help you work faster and reduce your maintenance cost. So let's get started. To show off how this works, we need a WebAssembly module that uses interface types. So let's make one. As a scenario, let's say that we're making a build tool for generating static sites, something like Jekyll. And we want this tool to support Markdown. So we can grab a Markdown parser like this one from the Rust community and compile it to WebAssembly. For this to work, we need to add the interface types. Since we're not the module's author, we'll do this by wrapping the functionality with our own module. First, we'll use cargo new to create a new crate, and then we'll edit the cargo.toml file. We change the crate type to cdilib, and we add our dependencies, the markdown parser and was and bind gen, which will add the interface types for us. Next, we edit the lib.rs file. We create a render function, which uses string types. We annotate it with the was and bind gen macro, and this does all the magic for us. It knows the various Rust string types should map to the WebAssembly string type. And then we compile our new module. We're going to use wasmpack for this. That will run the Rust compiler and wasmbindgen. So we'll download wasmpack. And because the interface type support is experimental, we need to add the wasm interface types flag. And this gives us the single wasm file that we'll use in all of these environments. So I'll copy the single file out to our main demo directory, and then we'll have easy access to it for the rest of the demos. For our first environment, let's go with pure WebAssembly. Our standalone WebAssembly engine, WasmTime, supports interface types. And we're keeping it up to date with the spec as it evolves. So let's download WasmTime from wasmtime.dev. Then we can run this module and pass it a markdown string. And you see, the WebAssembly module took the markdown string and returned the HTML string. Even though the runtime doesn't know anything about how Rust strings work, they were able to communicate with each other using this high-level type. So that was easy and straightforward. But what if we were building this site generation tool in Python? Could we just use this markdown parser there? Yes, and we may want to for the speed. So let's see how this would work. To show you this, I'll use Python 3.7. I also need to download the WASM time extension. This makes it possible for Python modules to call WebAssembly functions. Now all I need to do is import the extension, 
and the markdown module, and then I can call the render function. Now we run this, and again, it works. The types are different this time, we're passing in Python values, but it still just works. Because of the magic of interface types, the same file runs in the same way. We can also use the same WebAssembly module in Rust. One reason you'd want to use WebAssembly here is for the lightweight sandboxing that I mentioned earlier, which isolates this third-party module from your application. So let's walk through how this works. For this, I'm using an up-to-date Rust toolchain. First, we run cargo new to create a new project. And then we need to add WASM time Rust as a dependency. And this is the same thing as the Python extension from before. And we'll also add the failure crate here. Now we edit the main file. We'll start with adding the WASM time Rust macro. And then we'll add a trait and a render method to that trait. But we won't add an implementation here where you'd expect it. Instead, it's the WebAssembly modules render function that's the implementation. The macro just wires this up for us. It also adds in other methods on that trait, like load file, which instantiates a WebAssembly module from a file. So in the main function, we'll call load file to instantiate the module, and then call render. And something that's important to note here, the result is strongly typed. It can be used exactly the same way as a natively compiled version of the same functionality. So now let's use Cargo to build and run it. And again, it just works, except with a different environment using different types. This might not seem impressive since we compiled the original module from Rust, but it would work just as seamlessly if this WASM module were compiled from C++ or Go, as long as the module was using interface types. So that's how you can run WebAssembly modules in your Rust applications. Of course, Node would also be a good choice for this kind of project. In this case, we wouldn't use WASM time to run the WebAssembly because Node already has its own engine that runs WebAssembly, the V8 engine. V8 is working on adding support for WebAssembly interface types, and at Mozilla, we've also been collaborating with the Node contributors on adding support for other WebAssembly proposals. So Node will have native support for interface types. Once this native support is there, you won't even need to add a dependency to make this work. Node will just be able to use these interface types out of the box. You'll be able to take a single WebAssembly file and without any kind of build step, just run it in Node, and it will have these rich APIs with these high-level types. But until that native support lands, we're going to have to polyfill this. So we'll use the WASM interface types tool. And this will use JavaScript to create a bridge between the WebAssembly module and the Node APIs. Now, if we were doing this in production today, we would want to add this polyfill in as a build step. We would run WASM bindgen to create a JS file that wraps our module. But in this demo, I'm going to add it as a runtime polyfill, because this is closer to the experience that you'll eventually have, where you don't need to have a build step at all. For this runtime polyfill, we've compiled WASM bindgen to WebAssembly, and that will run as a dependency. So we need to install it here. And we need to add a loader file. This will ensure that the WASM interface types tool is run whenever a WASM file is loaded. I'm just going to copy and paste the one from the demos repo. We also create a demo.mjs file. And this will just import our render function like any other YES module. And now we run it with the experimental modules flag. And we add our loader so that it runs at the right time. And again, it works. So we can easily build our site generator in Node. There's one last example that I want to show to you, and this is the web. What if we created a site generator that was a site itself? Again, this is a case where there will be built-in support. So eventually, you'll just be able to import a WebAssembly module that uses interface types and will automatically work with the web platform. But for now, again, we'll use the polyfill that we did with Node. And we've created a Webpack loader that does the same thing that the Node version did. Just as with Node, if you were using this in production, you'd want to add this polyfill by running WASM bindgen as a part of the build step. But to show you how it will eventually work without a build step, we'll just use the Webpack loader to dynamically generate these bindings. To use this, you just add the Webpack loader in your config file. To keep this short, I'm not going to go into the details of how to use Webpack. But you can add this rule here. 
and then import the module, and again, it will just work. So that's the same WebAssembly module, using rich APIs to talk to five different languages and runtimes. And those are just a few examples. There's no reason why this can't work in many more languages and runtimes. If you have a runtime or a language and you'd want to add support for running WebAssembly with rich APIs, you can use WASM time to do that. We have an embedding API, so you can embed WASM time in your project to run the WebAssembly code. Feel free to reach out if you have any questions about how to do this. You can file an issue on the WASM time repo, and we can help you figure out how to embed it so that you can take advantage of all of this too. I want to thank the entire team that worked on these demos and on the specification proposal. And thank you for watching.